Hello boys and girls, happy Lord's Day. I hope you guys have been staying safe and healthy. Let's get ready to worship God with all of our mind, with all of our heart, and with all of our strength. This is how we worship. Prepare worship with prayer. Wear proper attire. Bring your Bible. Prepare your offering. Sit properly for worship. Organize and clean your surroundings. Avoid distractions. Lift up your voice for praise and worship. And finally, give God your full attention. Let's worship! Let's pray. God, thank you so much for today that we can be together to worship you. God, would you remind us what it means to live for you and love you as we continue to study your word. God, would you bless our time together and we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
friends this week we're gonna be talking about something a little bit different but really 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 important so we've been looking at the book of Genesis and all the wonderful things that God has done and been doing with his creation and that even in the midst of there being some really bad unfortunate things that have happened like when Adam and Eve sinned or when the whole earth had to be cleansed of all the people except Noah and his family, of when Cain took Abel's life, and even as we're looking at the life of Abraham and how he couldn't have a family until he was very, very, very old, there was one thing that we kept seeing over and over and over again. Can you guys guess what that thing was? Well, it was how God communicated with his people and how his people communicated with him. Can anyone tell me what that's called? Hmm. Prayer? Wow, you're so smart. That's exactly right. We are going to be talking about prayer this week and why it is so important that we pray. There are four stories I wanna share with you about today that take a look at what our prayer life should look like. Let's take a look. God's story, prayer. So part of God's story is about prayer. And it goes like this. Prayer is what we call a conversation we have with God. That means even though God created the entire universe and has power over all things, he wants to have a relationship with us. He wants us to know him. That's pretty amazing. We can talk to God anytime, anywhere, about anything. But let's look at four examples of different ways we can pray. One way to pray is to praise God. That's when we tell God what we love about him. Like a guy named Jehoshaphat. He was king of God's family when some big time armies declared war on them. Jehoshaphat was terrified. So he talked to God about it. He said, God, you are the mighty ruler of all things. We don't know what to do, but we're looking to you for help. King Jehoshaphat believed God could help them. So as he went into battle, he sent people ahead of his army to praise God. They said, give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. Yep, that means he thanked God before he won the war. And when God heard his praise, he caused those big armies to attack each other. Jehoshaphat didn't even have to fight. A second way to pray is to repent. See, we all mess up, which means we turn away from God. When we repent, we ask him to forgive us and we turn back to him. One time, another king named David made a big mistake. He took something that wasn't his. Then David tried to cover it up, which turned it into an even bigger mess. When David's good friend Nathan told him he disobeyed God, David repented. He said, have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love. Mercy is when someone gets forgiveness they don't deserve. And guess what? God will always forgive us when we repent. Of course, anyone can pray to God, not just kings. One woman named Hannah reminds us of a third way we can pray. We can ask God for something. Now, Hannah really wanted to have a baby, and she told God that. But you know what was crazy about her prayer? Even though she really wanted a baby, she said, God, if you give me a son, then I will give him back to you. Kids, isn't that unusual? To ask for something you want, then give it back? Well, a year later, Hannah had a son, and she did exactly what she promised. She gave her son back to God by sending him to live with a priest named Eli and do God's work. And Samuel just so happens to be a great example of a fourth way we can pray. Like any good conversation, we shouldn't do all the talking. We should listen, too. That's because God is in control, and we've got to yield or give in to what he wants. We yield when we listen to what God says and obey him, no matter what we want. One night, God called Samuel's name three times. When Samuel finally realized God wanted to talk to him, he said, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Samuel stopped to listen, and God told him things. When Samuel obeyed what God told him, God kept talking to him. And when we pray, when we praise, when we repent, 
When we ask and when we yield, we remember that he's the one in charge and that we get to talk to him because we're loved by him. And that's some of what the Bible says about prayer. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Prayer is talking with God and listening to God. Jehoshaphat praised God. David repented to God. Hannah asked God for what she really, 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 really wanted. And Samuel listened to God. All four of these amazing people in the Bible wanted what God wanted more than what they wanted. They realized that God was the one who was in control. And not only that, but that he loved them and wanted to be with them. So in the same way, we must remember that God is always in control and that he loves us very, very much and he wants to be with us. Let's take a moment to remember God's wonderful truth as we prepare to give our offering. God, thank you that you provide for us everything that we need. We pray for our family and for our friends. Would you provide for them too? God, would you take these tithes and offerings and bless them? We give with all sincerity and joy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Lord, if we could, we would fill our hands with all the wonderful things you give us. Then we lift them up and give them back to you. For this week's activity, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to make some telephones. Have you guys ever seen this before? Hmm? Hmm? What you're going to need are some paper cups, some string, some construction paper, your favorite coloring utensils, and a pair of scissors. So after you decorate your cups, you're going to write on them different things you can pray for. And then you're going to attach a giant long string onto them. And then, hello? Hello? Whoa, I hear myself. Hello? Hello? This is kind of cool. Try it out. This is a great reminder that when we pray, not only do we do a lot of talking, la 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 la, but we also do a lot of listening. So when we pray, we're talking to God and also listening to God. Make sure to get creative with your siblings and your family while doing this craft. The attitude of a great child. <laughs> Today, we're doing the Lord's Prayer. Repeat after me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
My friends, thank you so much for worshiping with me today. I can't wait to do it again next week. But until then, see you later.